Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Lorelai Shamayo. This is the MeWe Metaphysics and Wellness Fairs for Energizing Body, Mind, Heart, and Soul. We have events in person in the Pacific Northwest and many events online. Today is our awakening panel, and the theme today is de-stressing, cleanse your mind and soul. We have seven practitioners on the panel today. We'll be introducing ourselves and then talking a bit about the theme, kind of mixed in with our introductions and a bit after that. And then we'll be answering questions from the audience. I'll put some information in the chat if you know that you'd like to ask a question. And if I say again, it's free to be here to listen and learn. It's a great opportunity to practice opening to your intuition. So if you haven't gotten something to write with, you might want to do that as we go through and um, even do our introductions. You may have information come in. Um, yeah, I'll say more afterwards, but it's just a great opportunity for you to practice your own intuition while we're here together. So practitioners will do intros and we'll talk about the theme. And yeah, then we'll set the container and be answering your questions. So, and if you know you want to ask a question, the information is in the chat so that you can pay. If you do pay, please let me know in the chat so that I can get you in line. So when we get to answering questions, you'll be right there in the order that you paid. All right, practitioners, let's see. I've moved you all around on my screen. I think we're going to go with um, Susan and then Susie and then Jeannie, Kelsey, Bonnie and Satora. All right, great. So Susan, you are up. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, I'm Susan Watkins with Inspired Life Essential Wellness. And uh, stress is something that we deal with every day, if not multiple times in a day. It's not something that can be avoided um, but it's something that we can learn to manage. And there's multiple tools um, that I've used personally, as well as with my clients um, to help with that. Um, becoming aware of what are those stress triggers for you? Where do you feel them in your body? How do you feel them? Do you feel hot? Do you feel cold? Do you feel an ache? Um, so just having that awareness and then uh, utilizing Reiki, sound, music, dance, movement, be it yoga, uh, breath, moving that energy through your body, inviting that time to reset, to clear the slate clean, to honor what's there, but open to what's possible. A lot of times the stress comes from the story that we tell ourselves about what's going on. Is it possible for you to alter or change that story in some way to decrease um, that stress? So I really look forward to the questions and being a part of this panel. Uh, again, I'm Susan with Inspired Life Essential Wellness. You can find me on social media channels at inspiredlife.essentialwellness, as well as heal.me slash inspired life. And um, I will be offering a special for this, for those that attend this event today. It's about a 30% off um, and those will be listed in the chat. So welcome and um, let's get started. Thanks, Susan. Hi. Susan. Next. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm Susie Parker Goins of Blue Lightning Healing, and I'm a channel, so I bring source through and that presents to you in ways that you're comfortable with. So if you want to talk to your ancestors, I'll talk to your ancestors. If you want to talk to your spirit guide, sometimes they actually embody in me um, through me so that you can talk to them face to face. Um, I'm an energy healer. I throw cards. I work with crystals. I look at past lives. Past lives are oftentimes the origin point for a lot of, of stresses that we build for ourselves in this life. I'm also very much a, a fan of breathing. I think breathing is really important as a way to help us ground. I mean, it's portable and we all have to do it. So when we do something like conscious breathing, it does it, it, it helps us tremendously. And I'm in the same camp as Susan is. Your body can tell you so much about where stress is. I believe in talking with my body to see what is that? Where is it coming from? Is it mine? And we go on and, and we learn about that sort of stuff with you. Uh, you can find me at bluelightninghealing.com. You can email me at Susie, that's S-U-S-Y, at bluelightninghealing.com. And I have 20% off uh, any longer service. And you can get that through my website. And I believe I should have been efficient and given Lorelai the code. And if not, I'll I'll talk about it later. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm so excited that we have this community where we can feel comfortable and trust each other and reduce our stress in a lot of ways. Thanks. Thanks, Susie. Yeah, I think I got your code in the chat from the event earlier too. Jeannie's next. 
Hi, my name is Jeannie Sullivan, and I'm the founder of Heartfelt Energies. I do many things in the metaphysical world. I am a tarot card reader and a medium, and I also do energy work. And the types of energy work that I do is Reiki. I'm a master teacher in Reiki, and I also do something called Primus Activation Healing Technique, where I uh, where I use the earth's energy as well as the universal source energy to help you become balanced, grounded, centered, and whole. And the easiest way to describe how it feels is it feels like having a massage for your soul. It's, it's beautiful, beautiful energy. Uh, in addition to that, I am a, a Mesa carrier. And um, that means that I can use some indigenous energies to help you feel balanced, grounded, centered, and whole. I too, I too love breath work. It's easy. Like Susie was saying, it's portable. Um, and there are many things that I can show you or teach you how to become balanced, grounded, and centered. In addition to all that, I also teach classes um, and workshops and sem seminars on balancing, grounding, healing, um, and a whole host of other things. So again, my name is Jeannie Sullivan. I My business is called Heartfelt Energies, and I too am running a special. It's 20% off on an hour session. Thanks, Jeannie. Kelsey's next. All right. So Kelsey Hart here, and I'm a medical intuitive and a plant-based healer. I guide people to heal their mind, body, soul, spirit, and heart, utilizing plant-based nutrition, herbs, energy healing, and medical medium information. Um, I've gone through my own transformation journey of healing debilitating chronic health symptoms. And um, I did that using nature and a lot of energy healing techniques and it completely transformed my life and my health. And so that's what I help people with now. And so I went through a process of actually detoxing my body first using plants and um, specific nutrition and medical medium information. And once I was able to do that on a physical level, it affected all of the other levels of my being to the point where I actually started um, experiencing a spiritual awakening. So um, detoxing my body was, was a beautiful trigger that helped me to actually um, reach new heights in my life. Um, and so that's what I am bringing to the table today to share with you all. Um, you can reach out to me if you're interested in working together on my website, which is www. Or actually, sorry, it's in the chat. Um, and then also I have my email in the chat as well. So you can send me an email if you'd like to connect um, and perhaps have a chat or a call. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kelsey. Bonnie is next. Hi, all. Bonnie Rigsby here. I am the owner of Let Your Soul Breathe. Let Your Soul Breathe is all about stress management. I decided to do this business years ago. I've had abilities my entire life, intuitive guidance, et cetera. But it wasn't until I started losing family members very close to me that a light switch went off. Hey, I believe a lot of the diseases and illnesses in the world, and the medical community will back me on this, are created by chronic stress. Now, we all have it, y'all, roller coaster of life. That roller coaster is going to keep going, but maybe we can tap into our self healing abilities, learn to love the skin we're in again, and avoid what some people like my own father, who had lung cancer, passed from. I believe at least a big part of was due to chronic stress that he didn't know how to heal. So now that I understand how to heal myself, I'd like to share that information with others. So I am a Reiki master, life and soul coach, intuitive guide. I do EFT and tapping. I teach all about authenticity and empowerment. I want to teach you and give you the tools and tips to help love yourself again so that you can live, enjoy peace and purpose as we were intended to be and shut off this barking dog of a mind of ours that gets in our way. Thanks, Bonnie. Satora. Hi, I'm Satora with 
Amaris Wellbeing. I work with a group of Ascending Masters and Angels called Amaris. I'm a uh, founder of Quantum Energetic Realignment, which is our energy healing modality, which helps you uh, tap into the source of who you really are, the source of your well-being, and align with who you really are and what you want. And in that process, you're being based in love. You're and whatever blocks are in the way are kind of melted away. Um, so you will emerge in a different state and turn in a direction towards where you want to go out of the session. That's the basic how it works. Um, I personally do a lot about self-care and, and stress management, the dancing, walking in nature every day. Um, and I also work with... Uh, healing modality called Jinjin Terra, which is something I'm learning. Um, it works with acupressure and the meridians. And I am, I, and there's many, um, it helps integrate because it's body touch. It's a really good complement to the energy work because it helps integrate it into the body and helps the nervous system and the whole body system. And um, I'm just going to give you one simple, very little right now. If you, you all, we all know these prayer hands. If you do them intentionally in a way that everything touches all the fingers and the palms of the hands and put them to your heart, that is not just uh, like a prayer gesture or a namaste gesture. It is also an, what we call an inju a hand flow that helps center and bring both halves of the body both halves of your being together and centers you so that in itself is already a de-stressing and calming thing that you can do for yourself right now um, i have a special 33 percent off all sessions you can reach me at amaris.com a-m-a-r-e-a-s-e.com i also do an event called relax receive replenish which is a 20 minute uh, meditation immersion that is solely for recharging and relaxing and uh, you can get a free sample of that on my website if you wish thank you thanks satora and I'm Lorelai Shamayo. I'm an intuitive eye reader. I am a matchmaker and I'm also a body psychology coach. Primarily, I use my body psychology work to help with de-stressing. Um, it's good for me to remember to use it for myself too. And I was feeling particularly stressed earlier. It was really good for me to remember, oh, now what do I do about this? So I'm feeling more relaxed now, more present now. Hey, the primary tool that I use is breathing. I use a breathing method that not only relaxes me physiologically because of the way that I'm breathing and the rhythm and pacing of how I'm breathing, focusing on my breath is itself a meditation. So it works in multiple ways to, to calm my system, my body and my mind. Um, there are all kinds of things that can be um, meditation. So I know lots of us know different uh, there's just so many different things. I've got a particularly squirrely mind. So doing physical things is great for me. I used to do throwing on the pottery wheel and I didn't realize until years later, that's totally a meditation, right? Single focus and the awareness so much, the delicacy of my physical environment with hands. Um, yeah. And I, I sit on a ball and well, this isn't a meditation. This is something that has me presence. So this ball is not as full as some others, but if I float on it and I'm focused on balancing myself, that's an example. It could be a meditation. Um, just all kinds of different things. Hey, I am, um, yeah, it's wild. So tools that I could use probably more often are different kinds of electronic tools to take things out of my mind. Long ago, when I used to not go to sleep as easily, I used to have something by my bed where I could just write lists and lists of the things in my head. If I woke up in the middle of the night, write lists and lists of things. So for me, just emptying my mind in various ways, right? So helpful. Oh, there's all kinds of information that our body does give us as other practitioners have shared. 
we each may have our own particular pattern and there are lots of things that are common of ways that we tighten and move faster inside physiologically and in our mind, our brain, our, our neurons, um, all kinds of different things, shoulders up, like different muscles being tight. All kinds of different things can tell us that we're stressed. If I simply watch my, my breathing rhythms, all kinds of different things. And there are lots of things we can shift, some that we started talking about now. And there's so many more. I'm guessing that as we're all talking, I will remember so many more of the tools um, that I do know and that we can all use. I'm going to share just a little bit about my eyes, too. When I read someone's eyes, I'm reading their soul. So I can see how well they're in alignment with what their soul is telling me is their truth and their purpose and how much they're in alignment in their behavior in the world. If we're attempting to be the ways that are not authentic and true for us, that creates lots of stress. It comes from fear and stress. I say to uh, just different models I use. Another model I use is the drama triangle. So three roles that we can get caught in, the hero, the victim, and the villain. If we are heroing or stretching out to do things that we don't want to do, focusing on things that are really not our business, that will have us totally stressed. If we feel caught at the effect of the world and there's nothing we can do, we might feel collapsed and less alive. And we also might be stressed by that. And if we think we're the ones that are responsible for making everything work and blaming others and ourselves for things not working well or the way they should be, we'll be in a complete state of stress then also. So that's a model that explains all the mess that goes on and ways of sorting ourselves out of that stress also by beliefs and new behaviors. So all different kinds of tools for looking at how to calm and trust our mind and our soul. I'm at lorelaishamayo.com, and there's information in the chat. And part of what I specialize in is matchmaking, so helping us find others with whom we can be our best and learn to be relaxed in relationship. For example, online dating can actually be done in a present, relaxed, de-stressed state. So I look forward to helping you apply these tools to that as well. All right, practitioners, sometimes hearing ourselves talk, hearing each other talk, we think of more things we want to say about the theme. Do any of you want to jump in and say more about today's theme or more about your backgrounds after having heard each other? Let's go ahead and jump in. It's possible we don't. I just want to check and make sure. All right, great. Well, we're going to just jump in and get started today. So a few tips for everyone. Um, and some requests. So this is a great opportunity to practice opening to your own intuition. So if you haven't already, get something to write with and something to write on. So you can take notes, draw, scribble, see what's coming through you and how similar it is to what we share when we answer people's questions. Just great opportunity for that to see if what is showing up in you is similar to what we're tapping into as well. Of course, you may have all kinds of great insight coming through that we don't mention. Just a great opportunity for confirmation. Second is that we would appreciate if you would allow the attention to stay up on the panel today as we are answering questions. So even if insight comes through you and you can see it in your notes, please, if you could hold that until we finished answering someone's question. And then if you want to, you're welcome to reach out to them privately in chat and see if that person would like to hear what came through you. Please trust whatever they share, honor whatever they share. They might feel full and not want more. Trust that it came through you for some other reason. And also, this is a public forum. We are recording. So in addition to all of us being here now, it's going to be posted on the web. So when we are answering your question, you ask this. If we go deeper than you want us to go in this format, or we talk about topics you don't want us sharing about in this format, please let us know. Give us guidance in the beginning if you wish. Interrupt us if we go off course and let us know how we can kind of pull things back on track to honor you. It's very important to us that we honor you. I'm going to put the info in the chat again about how to pay to ask a question. And if you have already paid to ask a question, let me know. I'll make sure you get to the front of the line. Last I looked, and I'm going to go take a look again. We didn't have anyone in line yet, but that was like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. So we're going to be open for questions on any topic. It can be on something related to the theme where you know that it's connected. And it's fine if it's a completely different question. Chances are 
And now up her PayPal, I get to mark all kinds of vehicles in the images. So it'll be just a moment. Um, so you can ask us a question on anything, and it can be specific to the theme where you know that the theme is relevant. However, you might not have any idea, and we may pull it back to the theme, or we may answer in some other way. I know I'm excited to have some of our newer practitioners on the panel and also some practitioners that are returning that haven't been on in a while. It's great to reconnect and kind of expand and be constantly expanding our community. All right, I don't think that anyone has jumped in to ask a question yet and no one has mentioned it in chat. Oh, Satora has something to share. Go ahead, Satora. I, I just thought because we don't have a question yet, I, I wanted to share with you uh, something Call, that's called uh, Central Vertical Central Meridian. Ah, I forgot the name. Anyways, it was <laughs> really great. It's the um, I think acupressure version of balancing your chakras, and you can easily do it. Anything in Jin Jin in Jin Jin Terra, you can't do yourself harm at all. So it's all completely safe, and you can do it as often as you want and um as long as you want so i'm gonna go through this this one has several uh, places we hold because it goes through the different chakras um so i'm gonna go through it really quick but you can do it longer and stay in one place longer when you do it for yourself so this is great to just generally calm down and center it's great before a meditation or great to before you do anything stressful you can do it in like a minute or two or you can do it for 10 minutes if you want that's up to you so you put one hand on top on the center of your head on top of the head and then the other hand here where the third eye is between the eyebrows so that's the first hold so this hand on top of your head stays there for most of the flow. Then we go from the forehead to the nose. You touch the tip of your nose. Then here uh, down where the collarbone is and the throat, collarbone and throat meet here. Um, then the center of the chest. And then the next is on the solar plexus. I guess I have to stand up now. Deep solar plexus. The next one is about uh, two finger width above the navel. And then the next one is on the pubic bone. And this is when the head, the hand that was on top of the head now goes down to the coccyx so here oh, well you know where it is right the coccyx so, being the tailbone yes tailbone right that's what i mean so you you're basically holding this area from both sides so that is the last one if you want to add an additional grounding you can put um one hand next to the hip bone like in, in here in this area the, the, this groin area and the other on a foot under the ball of the big toe same side on the body oops it's hard to for me to show just you know everybody knows about reflexology so there is points on the feet too and this is right under the ball of the big foot Oops. and this is not necessary but it's an additional grounding so all the way down that's the basic main central vertical flow i remember now and <laughs> this thing with the groin and uh, foot is additional i always do it on both sides of the body great great and it's yeah. also a great substitute. If you don't have time to meditate, you can just do that for you know, two minutes. That's yeah, nice and brief. And that last part, if needed, do sitting. <laughs> great. Thank you, Satora. That was lovely. I'll get more information in the chat for the people who are new. And Kelsey, you had something you wanted to share. 
Yeah, are we still just sharing? Um, okay. okay, go ahead. Generally, yeah, so, um, well, something that I just have an affinity for is nature, um, specifically plants. I think that plants are extremely helpful for like us de-stressing. Um, and so I love to share that like, you can utilize plants on many different levels. So you can actually like put plants in your body by consuming them, like eating um, fruits and vegetables and herbs, and they are just extremely supportive for the body. Um, some supportive herbs specifically for stress are lemon balm, um, California poppy, and passion flower. Those are usually my go-tos um, to like calm my body down. And um, and then using plants just for like, you know, if we go out and recreate, um, being around plants is also really healing. I, I went to a forest bathing class once and I learned that there's actually a study done. Um, and sorry, I can't like quote the study source or anything, um, but there was a study done that showed that trees give off a specific type of um, chemical or energy chemical type substance. And so this substance is something that um, humans, it, it, it actually was shown that it de-stresses and boosts the immune system of humans. So if you go into nature and you like spend time with trees, you can even, there's some trees in Lorelei's, <laughs> nice. Yeah, like you can even do meditations where, or visualizations where you like imagine that you have roots growing into the ground and those roots are connected to the trees that are in your yard. Nice, yeah. Uh, beautiful, love flowers. Um, but yeah, you can like energetically connect to nature and it really, really helps to support um, the human on all those different levels. And that's been my go-to for myself. Great, I was gonna su suggest for those of you that are in the Seattle area, um, this is a dahlia farm that's down Mount Cyrose. So these are these flowers were grown just down the road for me. They uh, are only available for about a month, and they just started yesterday. Yeah, love flowers so much. I just got sunflowers today to bring some nice energy into my home. Yeah, that's great this time of year. Yeah. If anyone else has other panelists, if you have other general suggestions while we're waiting for questions. Excuse me, Jeannie, go ahead. I kind of wanted to piggyback on the idea of uh, the earth. When, it, when it, The earth does a really good job of balancing, centering, and grounding us. One of the best things that you can do for yourself is go outside, stare, stand barefoot on the ground and take a breath in and dump all your anxiety, your stress, your whatever's going on for you into the ground. So you can imagine it just going down your body and out your feet and into the ground. And the, and the earth's energy will take that, turn it into fertilizer and send it where it needs to go. And then when you take your breath in, imagine that earth energy meeting your feet and bringing that energy up to your heart and, or, or not for that matter, all you really need to do is stand on the ground barefoot and you'll be amazed by just breathing in and out and standing barefoot, how balanced and calm you will feel. I can't underestimate the power of the earth for grounding purposes. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, out barefoot. I was gonna say too, those of you that use crystals, I don't know them so well, but there are probably some crystals that are better supporting us in grounding than others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. So Bonnie, yeah. So anyone else, I, I, I just, I just happen to have this here. So I, this is where I don't often know why I do what I do, but maybe it helped me ground and be present and be connected. But um, yeah, so anyone that knows more about this, feel free to jump in and share. Like I would guess like probably some more like these are better at grounding. Just for example, yeah. I'm guessing. Okay. 
Susie, did you want to? I know. I'm just going to. Yeah, I, I can speak a little bit to crystals. Um, in general, um, if you're looking for a grounding stone, it would be the stones that are red that resonate with the, the root chakra. But understand there's also chakras way underneath, way below there. We even have chakras above. So the transpersonal chakras are like so, the soul star. And the earth star is what's deeper into the earth. I don't know what stone Lorelei has, but here's a lovely obsidian. Obsidian's a nice black stone, which is the, the soul star. The earth star, excuse me, it's the earth star. And um, those will help you ground. Um, I, I think grounding is really important not only because we're sending our stress into earth, but we are also taking that time out. I don't know if any of us will, will encourage breathing anymore. I don't know if we can encourage that enough. I do something called infinity breath. So I'm breathing in source, I'm breathing in love, and then I'm breathing out the stuff that doesn't help me. So maybe it's anxiety. And if it's only just enough anxiety to get me to the next breath, I can do that. And I continue that until I have removed the stuff that's bugging me. So it could be a to-do list. We've talked, we've had a lot of animal metaphors for the brain, dog barking. And I know the Buddhists call it the monkey mind. And so whatever we can do to help calm us enough doing those things that make us happy. Okay. I'm going to flip my hair over my positive blood work numbers. Um, my cortisol level dropped. And as my naturopath is talking to me, she says, are you still doing that energy work stuff and blah, blah, blah. And I went, yeah, I am. Okay. And she's got to my cortisol number. She said, those have dropped. Your stress is really down. What's, what are you doing? And I'm sure she's expecting something like meditation or a hobby. And I said, no, what I do here in these forums that's what helps me to release stress because I am surrounded by people. I don't have to feel like I have to justify what I do to. So I, I encourage that finding your community is vastly helpful in, in releasing stress because you have, you don't have to, to prop up that facade of, oh yes, I'm corporate Susie, which <laughs> no, that was a horrible time, but um but that we can be who we truly are. And I feel that's vitally important in reducing stress for us and breathing. And yeah, I think that's that's my two cents right now. Thanks. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. I know we've got a question coming in soon. It's not quite here yet. Kelsey and then Bonnie. Yeah, um, I was just gonna share a little bit more about crystals. I have a um, orgone device here. This is an orgone tower buster. And orgone is really good for um, helping to cleanse out like negative energies or, you know, energy from technology, like radiation and stuff um, is really protective for that. So I carry this around with me quite frequently. Um, and then another thing that I like to share is that, you know, you don't even have to go to a shop and buy some crystals. You can literally just go, I would suggest like going to your favorite nature spot and maybe finding like a little token that brings a lot of um, just really good positive energy to you or even grounding or peace or calm. And then you can ask nature, ask permission um, to take the object. Of course, you never want to just like take things that's not respectful, but you can ask for permission from Mother Earth and just kind of sense what do you feel around that? Does it feel right to take it? And then um, you can um, potentially just carry it around with you as like a little token. So I did this at the river because I go to the river a lot. Like oh, the river is my sister and I just am like my best friend right now. And um, I uh, asked if I could grab a rock. And so I have this special rock from the river in my favorite place that's really special to me. Um, and then, yeah, breathing, I agree, is like, that's like the number one important thing to really get down um, to like start managing stress and just living a beautiful life. Um, one of my favorite breathing techniques is um, breathing white light in to help um, heal areas in my body that maybe there's blockages or just need some support. 
It's great. I'll just mention really quickly about that too. Fresh water, drinking enough fresh water. There, for those in the Seattle area, again, there's a spring in Linwood where I know people often go to get water. My um, trainer gets it there. I have a spring on my property, so this water is is really good and clean too. We've tested it. Yeah, the drinking enough water flow. Right? <laughs> Bonnie has something else to share too. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Couple things. Crystals. I'm a mad crystal lover, y'all. So, y'all were talking about Oregon. I'm a Star Wars lover, y'all. So, I got to have Oregon Star Wars stuff. And it sits right next to my computer because all of this EMF activity going on, we need something to help us. I, in particular, am one of these that my mind is racing all the time and I have so much energy coming in and out of me that this is one I keep with me all the time. This is Tiger's Eye. I've loved this since I was a kid because it's beautiful and it's golden, like a big ray of golden sunshine. But it also really helps to kind of hone in, kind of throw a lasso around your energies and kind of get them less scattered because mine tend to scatter because my mind's everywhere. So Tiger's Eye, I would recommend as well. I do also want to just touch on, I think it was Susie that talked about the monkey mind and the barking dog, just to kind of address that real quickly, because this is a really big part of my business in working with stress. And I have found the number one thing that gets in our way, which I believe is what has been placed on the earth as our obstacle, we'll call it, our greatest challenge, is getting past this beast right here. Whether we call it the monkey mind, the barking dog, whatever it is, is constantly rah, 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 rah. something little will happen. And because we're in a frazzled state, we turn it into this ginormous problem when it really might just be a little pea-sized problem. What does that? The monkey mind, the barking dog. So if we can learn how to tame this and get back to our source, which is our heart space, that's how we do it. I call it the, the fear lens and the love lens. If you can switch from the fear lens to the love lens, you go find your peace because it's there waiting for you. So just offering that to you. I also wanted to encourage folks because I feel like they're, this subject matter is very, it makes you be vulnerable, right? And I see a lot of people in my business because I deal with stress on a regular basis, coaching and such. It's hard to take the first step and it's hard to put yourself out there. I will say, I know I can speak for myself and I know the reputation of this group here. I know that I can speak for others when I say, this is a safe space. This is a judgment-free zone. This is a zone where, you know what? We're here to help each other. We provide tips and tools. We learn from you, you learn from us. This is a safe space to talk. No pressure at all, but you have to take the first step to get the information that you need to heal. So just encouraging folks that feel like they're ready to take that first baby step, we're here for you, okay? Great, thank you. Great that we had an opportunity for our practitioners to share more wisdom, it's lovely. All right, we've got our first question of Dolly. We've got a small, smaller group, so I'm not going to um, put us on spotlight. I think we can all see you pretty well. What is your question? Um, well, so I, I have, uh, I've had chronic pain for um, over 20 years. Yeah, go like 25 years or so. And I finally found something that has started to help release it. And, um, and part of that was also was discovering that it was actually due to stress that was living in my body from trauma, from my monkey mind <laughs> creating things. Um, and one of the ways that I've been doing it is to, you know, uh, it's, it's addressing it from, um, a book I read by Dr. John Sarno, where it's actually exploring that trauma, not, I don't know, with, I want to say it's not necessarily relive, reliving it, but it's actually journaling the feeling, the true feelings that have been living in there that I have suppressed. But what I'm wondering is, you know, uh, 
I feel better. I mean, it's actually the pain is starting to release. So it's not as bad, but I'm wondering if that is actually doing, if that would actually do a number on my psyche. Say what you mean by do a number on your psyche. I mean, like, I, I can imagine- is it messing with my nerve? Like, could it? <sighs> I, I don't know if it's really screwing with my nervous system. I don't know if I'm, if I'm actually saying the question correctly. I just, I don't know if this is the right way to do it. And I don't even like saying the right way, but I. Yeah, let me, let's, we'll say a few things and see if you clarify please. your question and it comes up. So you remind me that one thing I was thinking of when Bonnie was sharing is to me, including what's here is so important. So loving what's here the best we're able. So even loving the part of me that is like a monkey mind and is stressed that, that including that rather than pushing it away helps de-stress me. So for you, there sounds like there are lots of feelings that you've had that weren't safe to share. And so you're learning that you're safer now and you're letting more of these things come through. I believe that we all can have a limit about how good we will let things get. And so you're letting things get better. So you're in a place of knowing that you're, you're more worthy now you know this more about yourself you're allowed to feel less pain you're allowed to feel more present with yourself and you may discover somewhere along the way that you you hit a limit where you scare yourself we all do this right you might scare yourself and and not let yourself feel that 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 much joy that much relief and you may discover that you block or that you even make yourself worse for a bit and the thing again is to love and include that like oh i feel scared I feel scared and I'm letting in all that I can. I'm letting out all that I can, right? And the more you can love and be with that and not make yourself wrong in those moments, in those however long those moments are, right? And find ways to come back to like, I'm good. I know inside that I'm good. And remind yourself of all the ways that you make good contributions, that you're good and you're worthy and you're innocent, just like, right, dot, dot, dot. Not like all the stories that you were told or the ways that people treated you. And the messages that came with that, right? So coming to know who you are now and, and loving you as you are. I don't think there are any other ways that what you're doing will be harmful. You might have things come up that are bigger waves and big feelings, and you might want support from various people to be with them. I have a lot of trauma in my background, and I wasn't ready to face it and even let myself realize it was there until I had the right support and to let myself go. And I did, right, physical is so important to me. So I did some physical reenactment and have it happen differently. And right, so writing about what happened is a way of being with things too. So trusting yourself and trusting your body, right? If something feels like too much, pause and breathe. And then maybe go out in nature and wait to go back there for a bit, you know, and go back slowly. Yeah. So are, are we touching into the kinds of the things that are there in your question yeah and i i realize you know one of the things that um that i'm not doing is loving every every part of me every part and i'm i'm, I'm making some things wrong yeah it's, do your best realize that you have an opportunity to love and accept yourself more and you know and, and open to that as much as you're able right now and 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 that includes embracing like right now, I don't want to love this part of me, right? Like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to. And you let yourself turn away, right? And when you're ready, turn and look again, right? It's let your body, so physically for me is so supportive. Let yourself be with whatever's here, even if that's not acceptance in the moment. All right, we've got others in line. Thank we've you. got, you're welcome. Susie, Kelsey, Bonnie, Satora in line so far. Go ahead, Susie. And we're aiming everyone around two and a half minutes or so. Okay. Hey, Dolly. Um, there's no one single proper way to heal. We all find our own paths to it, just as we have all, we can all be called energy healers, but how that shows up with us is going to be as different as each of us are. So you are on the right path. You are doing the right things that are right for you. Um, there is a book that looks at the science 
of trauma and how it's held in the body. And it's called The Body Keeps the Score. And it's by Vanderkoek, I think his last name is. And it's set at the beginning of that whole PTSD discovery and diagnosis and all of that. And it's how the body, the mind is rewired. The brain is actually rewired when it's um, encountered with stress. So what you're doing is rewiring your brain, your brain, your mind, and also shifting your heart. Um, so I would encourage you to give yourself that permission to do that and how to, to heal. Because however that healing looks to you, there's a phrase we kick around here a lot. That is you heal, I heal, and that is I heal, you heal. So you're not only helping yourself by the, by the strength and the courage that you are taking by looking at this, writing it down, taking a break finding another modality to use, you are in fact healing yourself and others. Um, I'm looking at my notes. You're healing yourself, monkey mind. Yeah, give yourself permission and that will help to build your self-worth. And really that's that's what my notes have. And I honor you for your path. Thank you for being vulnerable with us. Thank you. Thanks, Susie. Kelsey? Yeah, I am... Um really appreciate what you shared because it sounds like you're doing some really good work for yourself like you're getting at that nitty-gritty deep inner work which a lot of people avoid but you're like going into it which is like amazing first of all um I had a thought something that I learned um when processing that trauma it can be helpful when you're doing that in a session to like also remember at the end of it to rebalance into what you really want so it's like you know it's a kind of like step so first you process and acknowledge and just hold space for what truly is coming up right now and breathe through it um, always remember to really breathe you can use the white light to help transmute that trauma and that pain um, and when you breathe, that will actually help your nervous system to stay calm and not get too like strung out. Like just make sure you're really breathing and holding space in the present moment for yourself. And then towards the end, you know, um, I mean, I usually feel a shift. I'm like, whoa, I feel so much lighter now. So breathe through it until you get to that space. And then you can... Um, rebalance into thinking about or um, trying to set the intention for what you actually want. Um, you know, what do you want to feel in life? What do you want to feel about your trauma? Um, you know, maybe like peace or balance or forgiveness. Um, you can actually honestly do that. Forgive if it's a specific trauma point, you can um, focus on forgiving you know, whoever was involved, forgiving yourself and then sending the person involved love energy and also sending love energy to yourself. And that will really help um, so that you don't stay in like that negative space. And then an, an one last thing that I um, thought of for you was like, I get trapped in this too, where I'm hearing other people's advice um, you know, it's like, do this, do that. And then I'm like, oh, crap, I don't, what the heck do I do? Um, yeah. Always remember to like, come back to your own self and your own intuition. Um, if it feels scary for you or uncomfortable, that's probably your inner wisdom, like telling you to like, chill out for a second and just keep following that like, um, inner compass inside of you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Kelsey. Bonnie's next. Hi, Dolly. Thank you so much for being so courageous and moving yourself forward. Um, I want to make sure that you know that you are worthy of being heard, which is why I'm so proud that you have brought forth your question today. I want to kind of clarify a little bit. You had made a statement, uh, you were a little concerned it might be doing a number on your psyche. So let me just ask the question, Does can I interpret that to be uh, 
that maybe you're feeling like it's a little bit of false hope or you're having a hard time deciphering whether this pain release is real. Is this really working? Are you questioning that? Is that kind of what you meant? Just for clarification first. No, it's definitely working. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So you're not questioning um, that. No, where I was when I started with it, I mean, it, I've been digging into this stuff for a while, but in the how changed about a month ago. And in actually journaling the way that I have, it is definitely released pain. I think what it is, is I've noticed that I'm a lot more sensitive to, um, I like even programs that I watch that I, 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 I can't handle watching, you know, violence or anything like that. Um, or even uh, anything that just feels triggering. Sure. Okay. So it sounds to me, I don't know what the methods are that you are using, but it sounds like something common that happens if you dig deep, for example, with tapping. It's excellent for things like PTSD and trauma. But sometimes if we dig a little bit deep and end on that note and don't give ourselves a chance to kind of, okay, let me settle down all of the noise that I just raised up in my body, in my energetic system, in my nervous system. If we don't have something to follow that, Reiki's great, meditation, breath work, all of that is good and calming for your central nervous system. There are some energetic exercises. Of course, we don't have time on this call to go through all of that, but please feel free to follow up so that we can do that another time if you choose. Uh, I don't want to put pressure on that today. I just want to let you know that I believe that you might be digging up a lot of energy that's sitting on your nervous system right now, and it needs to completely be released. So you're feeling some physical release, which is wonderful. But to get a little bit more off of you, I would say, at least for now, tap in a little bit more to your breath work and look into something called the breath of life, which is really good about honoring yourself, reminding yourself to love yourself, trust yourself, value yourself, honor yourself, doing breath work after what you're doing. See if that lessens the layers for you. I know it's not a quick fix, but I believe that's what's happening is a little too much is getting stirred up and needs yes. some help moving along, but trust yourself. You're on the right path. Thank you. Okay. Certainly. Thanks, Bonnie. Satora's next. Hi, hey, Dolly. Thank you so much Hi. for sharing. Um, I, thanks for... Um, putting the details to what, what you meant about putting a number on your psyche. Uh, I think there's, from my experience, I, I've worked through a lot of trauma too. Um, two things are happening while you work through all these things, you, you are of course in a more vulnerable state overall and the energies are moving within you. And then when they move, it needs to integrate but every time you release something energetically emotionally mentally you move into a different state and you could call it a higher vibrational state so your your base vibration your base state is elevated so you and in that suddenly things that were normal to you are not okay anymore because they don't fit, they don't align with your new state. And that's okay, that's a good thing. When violent films suddenly bother you, that's a good thing. That means that you have raised your vibration. And um, I've been through that and, and then I, I think, gosh, what's wrong with me? <laughs> but there's nothing wrong. It's It's just, it's like when you, you live in a place that's a total mess and your whole environment is a total mess and your neighborhood is a total mess. And then you, you start becoming a more orderly person and you, you clean up your house and then suddenly you go somewhere where it's totally messy. It hits you like this is not okay. This is, doesn't feel good because now you're used to something different. 
that's your your base normal and i've actually been through that exact process in my life <laughs> so um so that's what's going on so i wouldn't worry about that at all that's a good sign and it, you may also find that maybe even relationships if if they feel really bad all of a sudden or th that may be part of that too part of the cleansing that your relationships change and maybe new people come into your life and others fall away and then in in this releasing that you do with with the writing um i always love to invite uh from the spirit world i don't know if you believe in that but i believe there's a spirit in everything and we all have our team of invisible beings that are with us that you invite all that help that is there and and in a sense the writing can be like you you release whatever you're writing with the intention of bringing it before that life energy that unconditional love to be transformed you, you just give it like an offering so there is no um no danger that that you know you get too deep into it or by putting attention to it it makes it bigger that there, there is a difference between releasing something and expressing it to release it or you know putting too much attention and making it bigger so if if you set up that space for yourself and set these intentions that helps the process and you invite the love that's here for you i mean everybody always says love yourself but who teaches us to love our, I mean, I didn't grow up learning how to love myself. So it's, it's a process that we learn. And in that trust your intuition, your intuition and your guidance will become clearer over time. So if you have aversions or something feels really bad, trust it. So it, it's a layered process. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Jeannie next and then Susan. Paula, do you feel like you're full? Do you have more than enough ideas for yourself, do you think? Um, I think so. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm gonna but I'm Can I shift gears a little bit? Um, do you know what an empath is? Yes. Do you feel like you are an empath? Yeah. So it just kind of struck me when you said, I don't like to watch um, scary movies or whatever it was that you said. I'm like, oh, I bet she's an empath. Um, so that's one of the, one, another layer that you get to work with, with this. Um, in, in regards to being an empath and learning how not to take on other people's energies and keeping it as your own, one of the things you can start your day with is my energy is my energy and only my energy. And when you feel overwhelmed for whatever reason, my energy is my energy and only my energy. When you're gonna go out and people, great thing to say before you get there. So it clears your energetic field and it puts you your energetic self on notice that the only energy in your body is yours. And it's a quick, easy way to clear your energy when you feel like you have taken on other people's energy. Okay. I like that a lot. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Great. All right, Susan. I'm glad that Jeannie asked that question because I was thinking the same thing. You know, uh, it's been a lot of information. And so thank you so much for, for being here and um, allowing us to be part of your healing journey. And I just like to say that it, it is just that it is a journey. It's a process. It's not linear and it's totally normal to have these ups and downs and spirals and, um, and really trust. Uh, I think that that really comes trust your inner guidance. If something doesn't, I don't want to, I'm like, I don't want to attach the label of right or wrong, but if something feels off, 
you know, allow yourself that time to pause and, and to reflect, um, and know that this is your journey. And so others may have guidance, advice, but ultimately, you know, allow your heart to be that guide for you. And, um, I think protection, um, being that the empath came up, you know, providing that bubble of protection for yourself. Um, even if, you know, just putting your hands around you and just literally drawing this bubble of protection and you get to decide what comes in and what stays out and how big that bubble is. Sometimes, um, you know, even just like drawing that and seeing, okay, this is how much space I need around myself. Maybe sometimes it's a lot, maybe sometimes it's a little closer in. Um, and I think water came up. So maybe even utilizing like the shower or the bath and like physically just feeling yourself slough off and shake off any energy, whether it's conscious or unconscious, that is not yours. Releasing what is not mine, what is not mine to carry. Um, and essential oils of lavender, orange, and peppermint came up, either putting those in the bath, putting them on the bottom of the shower. Um, but um, I want to keep it brief because like you say, you're, you're full, um, but really just empowering you to um, empower yourself on, on this path of healing. So best of love and wishes to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Dolly, for allowing us to answer. Yeah, and we'll get this recording posted too, so you can go back and watch. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks everyone in the panel. Great answers, great awareness and sensitivity. All right, well, you have a sample of the kinds of answers that we give. Is there anyone else that wants to ask a question of the panel? Don't think we have anyone in line at the moment. No. Yeah, if no one steps up soon, practitioners, we can also answer our own questions. So if we have questions, we can ask the panel as well. Oh, Satora has something to share. Go ahead, Satora. Um, I just, when, when uh, Jeannie and Susan said about the big, uh, protecting your energy, there is a, a hold for that, a, a flow for uh, setting boundaries. It's, it's here on the upper arm about half high here you can do it with both arms and this is setting your boundaries it you know it's it's like this gesture when somebody does that so you you put your here fingers like so so that that is the one for setting your boundaries and then there is one for self-love. The self-love point is right under the arm, or behind the armpit, right at, at the edge of the armpit. So you can give yourself a hug and with your fingertips or hands hold here. Great, great. Yeah, and we can always like list off lots of tips too. Right, so. Say so, yeah, so Bonnie will go in a second. I'll say one other thing I do is if you notice you have like monkey mind that you can't quiet and your mind is just all these different things. So doing the sumo posture where crouch like a sumo wrestler, this is for everybody, right? So you really feel the energy of the lower body and you feel your energy going into the ground. You'll notice that it clears your mind. So it brings your energy right here, right now by doing that physically. It does that mentally and energetically as well. Um, Bonnie. Awesome. Dolly, I thought of a few more things. So uh, grounding, as the ladies have pr uh, presented here today, grounding is super important, especially for empath energies who need to protect themselves. Uh, being in nature, being in motion, being in the grass, barefoot in the grass are all great for grounding activities. Being in motion seems to be a common theme that's coming to me for you that it's important and it may help some of that fullness that you have 
start to dissipate a little bit the more you move. I don't know if you've seen someone do like Tai Chi where they're actually moving their hands like this. They're actually physically moving energy. So anything where you can move your hands, even if you're painting or drawing something or going outside, wave your hands, whatever, stay in motion. The other thing I want to offer to you, two different things. One is what they call a forehead hold, which helps kind of calm the central nervous system when you're feeling overwrought. Super simple, one hand, palm of the hand on your forehead, one hand back of the neck, just at the base here, which they call the Chinese headache point. And you're gonna do some deep breathing. I would do at least five deep breaths and just hold this position with your eyes closed. Our energetic systems are interacted with through our radio or magnetic hands, right? Right here. So you're actually interjecting with the inner energy system to calm the central nervous system. So I would recommend that for you as well as a mental thought. This is a mind game we have to play with ourselves to manage that barking dog. Anytime you feel that you're being triggered from the traumas of your past or that you're replaying those ugly stories that aren't real great for you, you're bringing up energy that triggers you. So you want to make sure that you say to yourself, I'm not bringing that garbage back in. That was then. This is now. This is what I'm feeling right now. I can make temporary if I manage this right here and say, uh -uh, uh -uh. that was yesterday. Think about this. If you have a pet, I, I have a dog. So when my dog does his business outside, obviously I clean it up and put it in my garbage can, right? We live in Arizona, triple digit temperatures. You can imagine the smell over a course of days. Whenever you're feeling the way that you're feeling where you're bringing up past trauma, think in your mind, I'm not bringing that garbage back in. Think of it as if you have taken that dog crap from outside that's been sitting in triple digits in the Arizona sun and you're bringing it back into your house intentionally. Use that mind process to catch yourself and then correct the behavior. I hope that those tips help you. Great. Thanks, Bonnie. Um, oh, great. So. There's a question in the chat. Maybe practitioners, we can um, we can see how we feel about this. Someone's wondering about paying for a question that's not about themselves. Um, oh, it's about it's about us. Oh, yeah, it's about us. That's totally fine. If you want to do something about that, um, yeah, yeah. And it's not specifically on the topic today. Yeah. So the person that wrote that in the chat, that's totally fine. I think we can answer a question about that today. At first, I thought it was going to be a question about someone else that's not here. And that was going to get a little bit tricky. Yeah. So I can write you back in chat. But yeah, that's totally fine. The one that you're wondering about. Yeah. And Dolly, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. All right. And so if you want, we can just pull you on screen too before you pay if you want. I know you uh I know you'll do that afterwards. So just let us know if you're ready and we'll bring you up on well, we'll put attention on you. Okay, great. Daniel, yeah. So what is your question? Sure, why not? <laughs> okay. Um, well, this is a little different where it's a different framework because i'm not asking you to kind of focus on me and give me perspectives for me it's more kind of sharing from each of your own lives um how do i put this things you do whether it's attitudes or practices or so forth to be a clearer channel, to be a clearer reader, to be more attuned, to be of, you know, accurate service. Um, I don't take it as a given that we just kind of wander through the day and we're as good as we can be. So I kind of assume that readers have their own strategies to become better for the call at hand. So that's, and I'm not asking for things to actually lead us through. It's more to just describe in ways that work for you, 
not necessarily experiential right now. I hope hope that makes sense. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. And of course, jump in and clarify if we're going in direction that's not what you're intending and want. And everyone's in line. All right, so I'm going to go last. We've got Kelsey, Bonnie, Susan, Satora, Susie, and Jeannie. Go ahead, Kelsey. Yeah, um, <clears throat> let me know if I interrupt me if I'm not answering this right, but um, I immediately thought about because I, Daniel, I saw you at the last online fair and um, had such a lovely time connecting with you. And I was sharing um, a talk about medical medium information, which is like a specific way of healing the body of chronic health symptoms. Um, basically naturally, it's all natural. And it's from information above. It's from a spirit of compassion is where this information originates. And um, I've used this information to heal myself of brain fog, chronic fatigue, asthma, depression, a whole host of different um, physical chronic health ailments. And um, I noticed a, a huge part of this information is detoxing your body. So like the theory behind why we get chronic illness is because um, there are um, physical components that kind of create a recipe for us to get sick. And um, so the way that you can heal is to like detox your body using nature, using plants, using herbs, physical like using physical um, tools from earth to help you. So I did that essentially. And I noticed like, that's when I started to awaken spiritually was when I was working at healing my chronic health symptoms um, as like my body started to, it started to up level into this whole new um, energy frequency. Like I got rid of the health symptoms. I got rid of the dark dense energy and I started opening up my body to more light. Like that's how I, that was my experience. And then um, I was starting to all of a sudden like, resonate with hearing about angels, resonate more with God. Like I felt more connected to God than I ever had before. It was like my body was numb to connecting to that energy. And then all of a sudden I was just like in the zone, I was able to pick it up more. So I personally believe like healing the physical body is, is really helpful for becoming more of a channel to the divine and to source. It really helps. <laughs> Thanks, Kelsey. Bonnie's next. Okay, I'm gonna time myself because I know I can get wordy. Hi, Daniel. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I I appreciate your question very much. I wanted to address in my mind uh, one of the things that's most important to me is, to keep myself grounded is to remind myself who I really am. And that's constantly keeping my finger on the pulse, so to speak, and making sure that any limiting beliefs that I may have told myself, for example, I'm the glue of the family. I have to hold everybody together all the time. I'm the only one that can do it. I have to remind myself to keep those limiting beliefs that are ridiculous at bay and put them away, right? Be a container of myself instead of the container that culture has taught me to be the suck it up buttercup generation taught us to be someone we're really not so it's constantly being that open container for hearing ourselves speak for hearing those on the other side who are trying to speak to us that we can't hear because we're too much in our monkey mind or barking dog right if we live purely through the heart space doing breath work balance work, empaths, protection work, all of that is extremely important in our world here because we absorb the information, not just by our normal senses, but by our energetic system. So we're constantly picking up garbage. So it's my process is always being in tune with what kind of garbage I've picked up and always reminding myself, I'm always, going to be the teacher, but I'm also going to be the student, right? 
I'm never going to know everything. We're all connected. We're trying to help each other. So be the student and the teacher. Be consistent. But allow yourself to be human. You know, I, as a practitioner, some people are like, oh, you're just peace, love, and light. You don't have any worries. I have just as many worries. They are always going to come in. We're not to be on a pedestal. We're working through this game, too, called life. But consistency, trusting yourself, eliminating old stories, and reminding yourself you have a clear vessel and choice every day to set that intention, set it in the positive direction, and watch your life shift. Thank you, Bonnie. Susan? Hi, Daniel. Uh, yoga has been a game changer for me. Uh, I started as a student and now I'm a teacher working on my 500 hour um, practicum in with a sense with an emphasis in yoga therapy specifically. Um, but it taps into the physical where you're physically, um, you know, may have some blocks mentally. We've all talked about the monkey mind um, as well as spiritually. Where's your heart at? How does your body feel? How does your mind feel? How does your heart feel? So really checking into those three things on a daily basis, whether I'm teaching it to a class or holding space for myself um, has really been a game changer for me. And I think that just what I just holding space for myself, um, it's really important. So many times when we're in this helping field, we're helping others and then not filling our own cup. So making sure to be in tune to when we're feeling depleted before we get to that, you know, 10, we're, you know, we're fine. One, we're can barely get out of bed. So before you get to that depleted point, notice that you're feeling drained and then doing those things that build you back up. And it can be different. You know, you're going to hear from everybody. For me, yoga has been a game changer, that breath practice, movement practice, meditation practice, um, but what is, you know, what is it for you? And for each person that's here today, what is it for you that fills your cup? And, and then I specifically say, um, as part of my meditation, um, may I be an open channel for love and guidance to flow through me, whether that's just being out in the world, standing in a grocery line, or leading a class or being a part of a panel. Um, I just, you know, have that kind of grounding practice where I ask my guides, myself, my higher self, my, my, my present self, may I be an open channel for love and guidance to flow through me. And then um, I set an intention and I'm following into that 12 step of just for today, just for today, I am and stating how I want to show up today, just for today, I choose what choices can can I make that would support being that open channel? And then just for today, I will. What will I do to support that choice, to support myself and how I want to be, how I want to show up? Um, so there's there's a lot more, but I know others will speak, but those are the, the main things for me. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks, Susan. Satora is next. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for asking that question. This is really cool. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit of history in my life. Um, I've always, whatever my spiritual path was, has always been the most important for me. That was the only thing I was really interested in. And it's also what kind of kept me alive. I'm a little, I'm super sensitive but i didn't know about that for half my life so um i just had to find ways to deal and survive um and what what the most important was to through my whole history was to really start my day with some kind of connection i mean it has totally changed over the years it used to be something ritualistic and it used to be a meditation or but something to tune in and connect with the god within me the source within me to tune into that and I, I have to start my day like this this is very important for me and um and whatever that is that does that for you it can even be dance or yoga as Susan said and um, 
And for me now, since I've, I've started consciously working with those beings that we call Amaris, I connect with them all the time when this energy work, I, I didn't set out to be an energy healer or a channel. That was the furthest on my mind. But at some point I asked the question, what's my work here? And then like half a year later, this thing happened where this energy work came to me and I didn't even know what happened, but they said, I heard voices in my head. They said to do this every day on myself. So I did my own energy healing on myself and it has completely changed me and my life over time over the last 10 years so so that's what i do i always turn within or turn to those beings because i know that what you could call my higher self or my being essence is part of that group so i'm also turning to myself in that and i'm kind of in we did a lot of walks where i would start talking to them asking questions getting guidance so the connection is essential for me to navigate my life. I had also had a hard time making decisions. It, it could, for the life of me, not make decisions with my mind. So I had to develop my intuition. And I mostly go by intuition now. And that's, again, that connection. So whatever it is that that for a person that gives their connection, I think, the connection to who you really are and to source energy um, is most important. Thanks. Thanks, Satora, Susie, and then Jeannie. Hey, Daniel. So a day in the life with Susie as, as a practitioner. Um, I wake up every morning and I just say whatever energy I've taken on, I give it back and I'll reclaim my own energy. I also do a mantra in which I say, if I've made any agreements in dream time that are not in divine alignment with me, they're null and void. Cause I see that as, as intuitives and sensitives, we all tend to, a lot of us tend to travel the realms. And then I fill in with a statement into the mirror where I say, I love you just because, and I'm talking to myself. I love me just because. And then one of the newest techniques I've learned from the amazing Kai Bertrand um, is that as we are stepping more and more into our light, into our power, we're going to draw more stuff to us. And so those times I have a tweak in my body, it's like, eh, what is that? Sometimes it's an old emotion. Sometimes it's a past life. Sometimes it's an attachment that somebody has just seen me and they went, oh, and they threw some of their grief at me or some other sort of being has attached to me. And what I have learned to do, thank you, Kai, is to flush myself, put myself in this column of source light and allow it to permeate my whole being and to encapsulate this attachment or whatever, and I I send it off into source. I banish it into source. So I've got a great big blue warrior guy that just, you know, for me, it's the imagery that makes it impactful. He's got a great big baseball bat and he just goes, and you're out of here. And he knocks it out and sends it back to source. So it doesn't come back to me. Also just day to day, I'll do light language, which for me manifests in verbalizing. So I'll sing it. I hum to myself when I'm in the grocery store with the intention of providing protection to myself so people can't just ploop stuff on me. Um, I've got a whole bunch of, of shorts on my website that are different intentions using that light language. But light language is it's whatever is that expression of your soul, or as this other practitioner in Ocean Shore says, she kept hearing the song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And this is what light language is. It's your light shining out. And that can manifest anyway. Some people write, some people move and dance. We've talked a lot about movement here. Yoga is light language because you're, you're uplifting yourself. Uh, somebody said, I do pottery. Does that count? It's like, yeah, it does. Because you're lifting up, you're, you're raising your frequency to be more in alignment with source or divine, whatever you wish to call it. So yeah, I'm driving along and I'll be light languaging and sometimes traffic goes a lot smoother. Um, but that's what I do to help clear 
and to fill in and, and to help me move from client to client and, and move through my day. So that's that's a great question to allow us to all talk about how we work. Thank you, Daniel. See you later. Thanks, Susie. Jeannie? So when I go to work, um, my spiritual work, when I'm seeing clients, I, I combine both the divine energy and say prayers to the divine to make sure that I'm a clear channel. I ask that they um, are allowed in so I can um, do what I need to do to help them. But I also work with what's here on earth as well. So I do a combination of divine and elements and um, directions. So um, there are a set of prayers that I use um, and I, and I ask for angels help in that, the archangels, Uriel, Raphael, set, uh, Sandalphon, Metatron, Michael, and Gabriel. And then when I'm finished with that part of it, then I bring this world, um, the elements in, and I balance and ground and center myself using air, water, earth, and fire. And depending on what I'm doing for the day, I also incorporate... Um, directions into that north south east and west and there are some archetypes that i use when i when i call them directions too so i do a combination of both the divine and um elements and directions so it kind of matches that as above so below so what's up above in in the universe and divine source we bring that here and work that here on earth Hey, great. You've got more time. Is there anything else you want to share? I seem to be a gigantic proponent for elemental work, whether that, like I said, earth, water, air, fire, does a really good job of balancing. There's several prayers that I use for that. Um, and I, when I'm calling in the directions, um, that's also, I call it setting the stage before clients see me or I see them. Um, and um, one of my favorite things is to um, imagine earth from, or dirt, really, you're wearing earth boots, dirt boots, from my feet to my, to my knees. And then from my knees to my hips, I imagine water from, from my hips to my armpits, I imagine air and the top of my head um, down my arms, I imagine fire. So I say earth, water, air, fire, and then center for me, whatever you just decide divine sources for you, I do a rose compass and kind of overlay that on my torso. And then, so that works really, really well to center me. So if I go start at the bottom and go earth, water, air, fire, center, and then I say it, from the top down, center earth, center fire, air, water, earth. And then one more time, because we are the world of three, then I then I do earth, water, air, fire, and center again. Um, that does a, a really, really good um, um, centering job for me. And, um, and being really clear that, again, um, my friend taught me this and really she should get fees for this because I say it to everybody. My energy is my only, my energy is my energy and only my energy. So I am not taking on other people's energy. And if I'm ha having a conversation with clients, it's sliding off. I'm not taking it on um, because we all have enough of our own stuff. We don't need to add to any, we don't need to add anybody else's on to us. Great. Thanks, Jeannie. Satora's got something to add. Yeah, I so a big part of it is the self care part where I keep my my own vibration higher um, or stay in alignment. So my my basis is I need to be in nature. I need to walk barefoot every day, walk on the beach, be by water. So there are basics that I do every day that is has become so normal for me I don't even think about it <laughs> anymore but that that's very and and good nutrition of course so that's an overall keeping myself in a good state and then um as others mentioned that made me remember I I 
kind of create a field or a space, especially when I work with clients, I create a, a space, an energetic space where we meet that is completely safe and loving. And it also includes that all the energies go right to source that there is no stickiness that I attach myself to energies. Now, with varying successes, I am not always 100% at that. But um, so creating a field, even for the day where before I start my day, that I in, in sort of project this well-being and the essence of what I want into the day when I when I look out into it and creating a field um, that holds both the other person and me and inviting all those uh, invisible beings into that. So I wanted to add that. That's great. Oh, Bonnie, go ahead. I've got more to share too. I haven't shared yet. Go ahead, Bonnie. Go ahead. You want to, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt you. Okay. I just wanted to uh, remind you, one of the things is intention. Um, go piggybacking on what everybody's been saying, how we all call in our specific guides and helpers on the other side. It's all about setting that intention and it can be in thought, it can be in word, whatever the case may be, but you have to ask. And a lot of us out there can be afraid to ask for help because we might be trapped in the ego mind. But when we ask for help, we have a whole army of angels and guides on the other side. All of us do, past friends, family, and loved ones that we can call in for help. So setting the intention and asking for the help. And the moment we ask, we're putting that intention like microphone across the universe to bring in the help and be an open container to it. So that's definitely a practice that I do. Thank you, Daniel. Great. So I started having so many answers coming through that I totally had to start writing notes. And I realized that there are some categories. There's... Um, well, there's how did I prepare myself before I started doing any of this work that I didn't know I was preparing myself. And I go back to some of those tools sometimes. There's how do I prepare myself in the moment when I'm about to work with someone? And then what do I do when I have a bunch of stuff come up and I'm I'm not as present and I'm not in, as able? And that might be with a client and it might just be in my life. So some of the things in the moment are some of the things that I did for the context. And I've mentioned some of those already. Um, I did a whole bunch of my own timer. I did a whole bunch of healing trauma, particularly with somatic techniques. So that helped me get a lot more present and more open to all my feelings and the flow of all my feelings. So I'm more connected to my body and more connected to my feelings. Uh, breathing practice that I didn't realize was a meditation. I was always like, I don't want to meditate. So it turned out right at doing all this meditation and I can drop into it really, really fast um, with heart math. You can see how fast it is for me. Um, and also that I did throwing with ceramics for a number of years. So another way I was meditating that I didn't know. And then uh, getting myself around more conscious people all the time, community and people that I've dated. That I'm in the space with other people that are generally in this field so often in running events and attending events. So simply being here today is a way that I am helping myself be better being in the context of doing this work all the time, say being of service to people helps me feel more, uh, more energy and more openness. Um, I happen to, it's really great being in nature so that I have it right outside my window. So it's here all the time. And there are all kinds of consciousness tools that I learned in ways that I worked on myself and got myself more present. And I can always go back to them. Things like the drama triangle that I mentioned, feeling feelings, including anger, um, just with some of the other, with the other question that came up earlier to me, feeling anger is also so important to being loving of what is healthy anger, not aggression, healthy anger, um, and dancing with what's here and what I might want. So if there's something that seems challenging and, and tough in some ways, as part of the embracing that it's here, there's also how can I dance and flow with and play with. So play is one way that I open. And I would say also singing. For me, when I sing and this oming, right, and the the physiological impact and the vagus nerve, and so there's an open mouth, throaty kind of singing that um, you know, popular music from childhood and things like that. I get more present. So those are some of the context, and then some of the specific things. When I'm going to 
do a session with someone, sometimes I need to remind myself ahead of time. Like I had one client coming to me for a particular thing just in the last couple of weeks and I had some nervousness. Can I help with that? Like, I know I can, I know I can, but like, so telling myself I can notice the thought of the belief of, oh, can I? And the question, I know I can. Um, sometimes I have clients send me photos ahead of time, or even with someone that I'm in person, that I get a photo of them because I allow my energy to go more deeply into their space. So there are specific tools of how I work with people and then that help me get more present or to pick up more. Sometimes I'll work intellectually of, um, cause I have a map of things, right? So I'll go like, okay, what do I know? What do I, what do I think something is or something not? And I step through those things or I open and not use my mind at all. Right. So there's this open and How's the, there's a way I shift my breath. I realize I let myself look in someone's eyes, but I'm not really looking. I'm just sort of getting almost diffused and connecting energetically and letting all kinds of things open. So I'm not specifically connected with my mind or my heart or my spirit or my body. I allow all of these in. So there's a trusting of myself. And in general, I'd say trusting myself has been the biggest thing that I consciously do, which is opening to my intuition, but allowing all the things to be here. Um, all these things to be here. Um, yeah, trying to figure out where the background was. Um, and then in terms of doing work, I sorry, we're having a background that's funny that I can't figure out where it's all coming from. Okay, great. Um, in terms of setting up sessions with people, I think that it's important that we don't that we do something that doesn't take ourselves over that upper limit threshold. That has to do with how you describe your work, how you price your work, doing this in a way that you can stay embodied with what your work is so that as you're working with an individual client, those things aren't sending you out of your body or out of your experience. So you have access to all your resources. And just in general, like if for me to put myself in places where I can be as authentic as I can be, this supports me to be more empowered in how I work with everyone. Cool. Thank you. A different kind of a question, I know. I suppose I can say like a little bit of why that came up for me to ask and explore that in the moment it came up for me was y y several years ago, I want to say six or seven years ago, I went to my first, uh, it was like a metaphysical fair with boots and practitioners and things. And I had not been to something like that. And I walked into a panel kind of like me, we booth fairs do. And I came in the middle of that and it seemed like people were asking questions. So I asked what was kind of forefront on my mind, because I at that point had had 20 plus years of uh, body work training, you know, kind of personal transformation oriented body work. And it had just shown itself clearly to me that uh central to the client's process is what work i have done on myself and my own presence in that moment that was almost like uppermost and then you know kind of make sure that's attended to and and the client's needs as well but not to leave myself and land in the client's world so that was kind of my orientation and so i asked question i don't think i was unclear about it and there was this enormous dead silence and this it went on for like a long time like nobody had anything to say and there was this uncomfortable shifting by the panelists in their seats finally one person said do you mean meditation and that was a really striking moment for me that really still is shocking to me um, it was such a conflict or a contrast to my own sense of navigation in the world as a therapist. It was almost like topsy-turvy, like nobody does anything that they're aware of. It's like, wait a minute, help me make sense of this. So that somehow just came up. I don't know why today, but um, I just wanted to hear people's I statements around that because that's a centrally important to me as a practitioner and um, our introductions don't necessarily seem to be the best opportunity for that. And then last thing I'll say is I'm my inner intuition pointed out to me when people were finished 
sharing what they have had to share that it pointed out to me notice your me my experience of the panelists and i would say that i noticed that i was feeling everybody was more full i don't kind of know how to attach more words to it but each individual just seemed more here and more multifaceted and like a larger being in a certain way and I'm going to reflect on that. That was part of the, the value for me was to experience more deeper. Okay, that's thank you for being willing to address the question. No, that's great. Thank you. I appreciate too for all of our panelists. We have tons and tons of things we can say. Yeah, and all the different growth work we've all done on ourselves, and that's the big. Yeah, it's such a big part of how we're here. Yeah. Hmm. Great. Thanks, Daniel. Daniel often, Daniel is a practitioner in the community and Daniel often has great questions of how to, um, yeah, bring uh, wisdom out of our panels. Great. All right. I don't think any, oh, Jeannie, go ahead. Yeah. And we may have more we want to say on this, even though Daniel is full. Go ahead, Jeannie. Um, is it okay if I ask a question to the panel? Yeah, let me double check. I don't think anyone else has jumped in to ask a question. If there's anyone here yeah. that wants to ask a question of the panel. Well, I'll certainly, you know, you step get priority. Yeah. Yeah. I'll step down if somebody else has a question. Just checking to see if anyone else is willing to ask the panel. Okay, go ahead. I think you're, you're up. Okay. So it's my understanding that we definitely have that mind, body, spirit connection within our body. And there are spiritual aspects to our physical being. For, for instance, Louise Hayes talks about um, fear is held in your kidneys. If you eat chocolate, that you are looking for love and self-love. So I'm wondering if the panel knows what this spiritual connection to our intestines are. Oh, I saw you on Facebook. That's great. Yeah. Right. Yeah, spiritual connection to intestines that I'm not spelling right in my notes. Yeah, if anyone has any ideas, I'll just mention some of the things I think I said earlier, just in terms of getting the flow going. Um, I do know someone who is hugely um, personally negatively self-critical, tight, tight, tight. And she's had a disease of the colon where it seems like energetically everything just tightened in around the colon. There is someone that I dated at one point who was also really tight in on herself and she had trouble passing bowel movements. And there's a journey of like letting her energy open and to be kinder to herself so she could experience physical flow through her body. So there's that. And then I think of, right, so you had made a comment to say in Facebook about, um, right, it's about removing S, <laughs> removing shit. So if someone's not like, is are they full of shit? Um, I'd say like, what am I? What did I have this? So I think like removing toxins is a way of the body saying no, like removing the things that we don't want. So I look to see is the person have trouble with boundaries and saying no, right? Asking for help, asking for what they want or saying no. Um, and like, don't let that in my space. So that would be a place. Um, uh, go back to my ex again. Like she was just holding tight. She wouldn't let all kinds of things go. So like, and I think I mentioned some of this, maybe like holding too tight, taking on too much. Um, too much responsibility. I'm responsible for things that are other people's. Um, I think of hoarding, right? That's kind of hoarding resources in the body. These are just some of the things that pinged and new things that are pinging up. So anything else intestines? You know, my dad actually just had something, uh, just had surgery and it turned out that he had forgotten. None of us knew he had surgery when he was 13. I still don't yet know what his surgery really was. He had tons of scar tissue around his intestines. So I'm wondering what happened to him when he was little. What's, um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and this is just a few days ago. So yeah, so there's some things in intestines. All right, we've got Kelsey, Satora, and Bonnie in line. Go ahead, Kelsey. Yeah, so uh, first thing that came to my head was stress in, in general, because, you know, IBS is like really common for people who um, have like prolonged stress, but that's that's really general. Um, I would say probably like stress related to like um, chronic stress and like chronic burnout type stress. 
Um, like they're taking on too much stuff, probably lack of boundaries would relate to that. Um, and then, you know, there's the, um, the term trust your gut. So I think that there's some wisdom in that phrase where like perhaps one who doesn't trust their gut does potentially get like gut issues, um, intestinal issues. And I know that the whole process of like digesting food is highly metaphysically magical and amazing beyond human comprehension. Like science doesn't quite understand the level that um, our bodies like uh, break down foods. And it's a very highly spiritual process. Like there's metaphysical aspects that help us to do that. Just like, you know, there's like metaphysical magic in the sunshine that we'll never quite understand based on science. Um, I think that there's probably a tie there. So if somebody is feeling like disconnected from source or disconnected from their like metaphysical magic, it could probably show in like how their digestive tract is and the intestines are part of that whole system. Thank you. Thanks, Kelsey. Satora. So in the Jin Jin, there's a meridian for every organ and they are associated with elements. Um, so there's the small intestine meridian and there is the large intestine meridian. The small intestine meridian is associated with the fire element, which makes sense because uh, digestion is like burning. Um, the hard meridian is also associated with the fire element. The, the emotional component of the fire element is um, what I would call over efforting the sense of having to work hard and always putting extra effort in and uh, in an unbalanced state. Um, and the small intestine, it does the sorting of, uh, it sorts out what is useful, what do we keep and separate it from what goes out. And it somehow does that in connection with the heart. So discernment and uh, discrimination are things that happen in the small intestine. So if there is um, a problem with that, yeah, that would be that. And the large intestine is associated with the metal element, which, which equates the air element, has to do with relationships, grief, um, feeling abandoned. And of course, the, the large intestine does the elimination of what is not needed anymore. So, um, what is it going to say? I, I noticed stress in, in my large intestine too, because I get constipated when I get really stressed. So that's a big part too. And it, it does need a lot of water. So, um, oh, and the large intestine and the is associated with the lungs because they're both associated with the air element and relationships. So the lungs is where it comes in and the large intestine is where it comes out. So um, it's the whole exchange with the environment and the associated color with that is white. So somebody who is very pale may have some um, imbalances with the lungs eater or the large intestine. It also often manifests in skin um, afflictions like e eczema and that often can be related to the large intestine too. That's fascinating. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. It just got me thinking too about just gut biome and all the different things about health that we're now realizing that gut is so important for. All right, we've got Bonnie. 
and then Susie. All right. So here's what I have. Um, I believe that the intestines represent protection mode. So I know it's probably pretty common that you hear the hips hold grief, and that's right there, of course, next to the large intestine and stuff. So it kind of makes sense. I feel like the intestine area is protection mode for past victimized abuse type situations for some folks where they feel like they have to shut everything down. They have to shut everything down, do the suck it up buttercup that our culture teaches us, that mentality. And then people that have intestinal issues tend to be grieving in a way for their self, for their lost sense of self, for the self that they had to bury because someone victimized them in the past and had a past trauma. So I believe that that area holds the sense for trying to find yourself again, but grieving because you're buried in all this crap, right? And you can't mm -hmm. free yourself of it. So that's kind of what I feel. It's kind of like you're living a lie and it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It means you're living the lie that culture taught you or someone taught you. You're not being grounded in who you are. So your inner spirit body grieves and it affects your physical body in a way where you're grieving for your lost sense of self, the self that you buried as a boundary of protection. Oh, I'm going to put this cement wall up so nobody can ever hurt me again. That cement wall ends up permeating in the intestinal area. That's what I believe the correlation is, if that helps. It does. Thanks, Bonnie. And Susie. Okay, Jeannie. Um, you know, in general, I see the go the gut and I'm not talking just the intestines, but the stomach, it's like, that's where your instinct is. That's where nervousness can be held, you know, mm -hmm. butterflies, you've got butterflies in your stomach. Um, it's, it's about dealing with your own stuff and also not dealing with your own stuff. I have a different, I have a particular perspective and then I have a permanent colostomy. So I have to literally deal with my own shit every day. And it's just one of those things where I can overthink it or I can underthink it, but I've gotten to normalize it because I've had it for like nine years. It's not going away anytime soon. So it's also reminding me of my physicality, that this is who I am and to accept my body as it is. Still working. It's still here. So for me, it's about the physicality. Hmm and what I am dealing with or not dealing with. It makes sense. Great. Yeah, so anyone else, any other ideas? And I say, and it, it, it depends maybe what's happening with the colon. Can you say, is the colon, you said something in the post that made me think like disintegrating, but if it's if it's tight, that's different than if it's coming apart and has holes, and that's different than if it's like, like bloated or like, I just like there are all kinds of or the things are going through too fast. Those there are all different kinds of meanings to this. So this started a while ago. Um, he, um, he had colon cancer and he had a colostomy bag. The problem is he doesn't tell the truth. Hence the intestines. So I don't know if he still has the colostomy bag or, or had the colostomy bag or not. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because he doesn't tell the truth. So recently things were getting so bad that he could not make a bowel movement without an enema. And they, um, anyway, I digress. So they, he went to the doctors, they did, um, um, they did surgery and they found that his intestines had died and they got into the point where they disintegrated or they exploded or they whatever. So um, they kind of sewed him up and said, we're really sorry. There isn't anything we can do beyond this. And he passed away a couple of weeks ago. Um, and this is just a 
tip of the iceberg of the things that this person has done in his life. So it is not lost on me that this is how he passed away. Um, and if I didn't believe in karma before, and I know I will have my karma in the end too, um, I certainly believe in it now without getting into the nitty gritty details. Yeah, just as you tell the story, his energy feels like kind of blurry, fuzzy, you know, the like not telling the truth, like so not being mm -hmm. with the truth himself and not being with the truth in the world. And so I think of just, you know, like the the colon, it seemed like his colon did a bit of like a blurry kind of not with the yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, if I if I said I will shoot you if you do not tell you tell the truth. I would have to shoot him because he no longer for many, many years can tell the truth. He's very, he reminds me a lot of our former president. I was going to say, so narcissism or, or severe, what? severe trauma or the two, and, mm -hmm. you know, narcissism um, and both. Really comes yeah. From both. Trauma. yeah. Yeah. And I, so the, the person I, tells the truth, the best they can tell the truth. Like that's the closest they can get to it. That is their truth. Right. Right. For them. That is the truth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, and it sounds like, I mean, the person died in a way that they could say, oh, well, this part of their body didn't, didn't succeed or the doctors couldn't do something or so in terms of not taking responsibility, they could still like put blame on other things and not like I created this for myself. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. most definitely. Great. Yeah, thanks for sharing. I want to say we we don't normally have non-panelists speak unless we have people that are paid to ask a question, but heck, we're doing the panel in this new way today. Oh, and I'm also present to that Satora has got to go in a moment. So maybe let's have, see Alexa. If Alexa wants to share briefly, see what it is. And then um, we're going to have Satora check out because I know Satora has to go. Alexa, what is it that you're wanting to share? Is it on this topic? Um, yes, it is. Thanks for letting me chime in. I'm not sure that uh, maybe just so I understand. Um, I'm, um, I just thought I would ask just a general question on the topic. So would, does anyone have any feedback on um, bird or reflux? I oh. haven't heard any discussion. I have a number of clients who have that. Okay, great. Um, so let's have Satora check out first. And then we'll, um, yeah, since we're doing some general things today, Satora, I know you got to go to so check out and tell us your, your name, your modalities and how people can reach out to you and Hi, I'm Satora with Amari's Wellbeing, and um, I work with a group of beings called Amari's uh, Ascended Masters and Angels. I'm also founder of Quantum Energetic Realignment, an uh, energy healing modality. Um, you can find us at amaris.com, um, and I have a 33 percent special there's my 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 <laughs> it's great i can say it here so your special is 30 per hour or 47 dollars for 30 minutes those are both 33 percent off if you're here in the room today there's a coupon code in the chat which i can say or not say if you whatever you prefer and it's good for the next week or so through 9922 so if you're wanting yeah. to reach the tour special and do it now I also have a, a special event called um, Relax, Receive, Replenish that there you can get a free sample on my website if you want. It, it's because this is a de-stressing panel. This is specifically for that purpose. Thanks so much. It was was really fun. Thank you, everyone. This was really great um, to thank each of you for being here. And uh, it was really great to share with all of you. Thank you. Thanks, Satora. It was lovely to have you back after a, a couple of years away. All right. And then, um, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's see. Did anyone else have anything else to share on colon before we? Okay. And then we'll, oh, and this is coming back and then we'll go to Alexa's question. Bonnie, are you getting ready to share about Alexa's question or are you getting ready? Yes. Okay, yes. great. Alexa, you want to say your question again? Alexa up here. Yeah, Alexa, if you want to re-say your question. Digestion, I know is where it was heading. We can't hear you, Alexa. All right. Well, oh yeah, there you are. 
Okay, can um, I was wondering if anyone wanted to comment on um, uh, GERD, or I think it's also called reflux. I have a number of clients who uh, are dealing with that. Okay, great. It looks no. Yeah, reflux. Okay, great. Yeah, we got things to say. Bonnie's got something first. Go ahead. Yes, thank you so much, Alexa, for asking the question. Um, GERD and reflux, in my experience, a lot of clients are holding fire energy anger, resentment, things of that nature. Now, they might not seem like an angry person, you know, on the outside, you might not be able to tell it in normal everyday body language, mm -hmm. but something has happened to them in the past that's painful enough for them to carry. They haven't chosen to release it. So that anger and resentment literally is like it's bubbling a fiery volcano within. And it the only way it can go is up because it, the systems have broken down to the point from repeated patterns of this behavior, holding that old energy, that anger and resentment. Um, breath work helps with a lot of that kind of thing. Calming mm -hmm. the barking dog is essential because mm -hmm. the reason they're in that fire volcanic state mm -hmm. is because they've held this nasty energy that's multiplying through every one of their cells. Mm -hmm. And until they choose to release it, it's like literally bubbling underneath the surface, just like, you know, under our earth, we can't see that all this stuff is happening, but an earthquake can happen at any moment if the conditions are perfectly right for that. It's the same kind of thing. But to me, anger and resentment are the key thing that contributes to that situation where they literally swallow fire and hold it there until they choose to release it. I hope that helps. That's very interesting. Thank you. Sure. Great. Thanks, Bonnie. And everyone, let's be brief. We do have a question in line after this. So Jeannie and then Kelsey. I just wanted to say that Standard Process makes this all-natural product called Zyphe. Pan, and it's much, much healthier and safer than anything on the market like Prefacid or the multitude of other things. Um, it doesn't, ex it helps with the GERD and it doesn't exacerbate other things. So standard process, Zypan, and um, there's an essential oil called Digest Zen that doTERRA does. Um, and that does a really good job of helping with GERD as well. Very cool. Thanks for the suggestions. You're welcome. Thanks, Jeannie. Kelsey. Um, I just want to say really quick, like in general with health issues, um, there are like emotional root causes that like mm -hmm. help in these things manifesting. But if there was a physical component, then it wouldn't happen. So like for mm -hmm. acid reflux, um, the stomach is low on hydrochloric acid, mm -hmm. mainly to like um, certain toxins coming into the body and also due to a high fat diet. So that like burdens, um, you know, uh, stomach interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. to digest the food. And then there's usually a bacteria that will start to take advantage mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. hydrochloric acid isn't killing off the bacteria. And then that mm -hmm. causing the acid reflux and that uncomfortable thing. Mm -hmm. So stress does kind of have a play because like that can definitely tamper on our bodies working in our organs working properly mm -hmm. um but I do like to share like I'm that little fairy that's here and it's like there's always going to be sure. some physically kind of also mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. thank you that's where I have been educating myself um but I can see where all this kind of is coming together thank you very much Great. And I'll say one more thing too, please well, stop me if uh, you already just went here. I had trouble with reflux at one point and it was from a surprising place. I was eating food allergens, but had irritated my respiratory system enough so that my sinuses were producing acid, which was dropping down into my belly, drip something that was wow. down my throat into my belly. And then I was having reflux as a result of that. And so by oh changing gosh. the food allergens, I solved the reflux. Fab, that's cool. Thanks for sharing. That's really so, cool. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah, that's the other thing. Like, where could it, it could be anything? It's such a general term sometimes now. 
this is good also so and so when when i had a when i was super sensitive at one point to um my guts were just like i just, obviously i had the leaky gut thing and i was just developing allergies to everything i went down to a how did this work a diet where i only ate two or three things a day really really simple basic things eliminating all the key allergens i was eating those two or three things for i think like, I don't remember now if it was two or three days in a, maybe it was say two days in a row. And then I would switch and eat two or three other things for two or three days in a row. And then another two or three things. And it was so that my body wouldn't develop an allergy to those new things. And I was being so, so simple. So if, if, if one can just do that for a, probably even two weeks and um, um, drink a bunch of water, it would probably clear up whether, you know, you'll get a sense of whether allergies are an issue. So yes. Yes. Right. Interesting. Um, I, I don't know if anyone else has something to share, but one thing I will maybe add into this, if anyone's interested. Go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah, I, because I did inquire um, with an herbalist and she said that it, it's um, sometimes it's an esophageal uh, um, hernia related issue or like reflux that's connected to the esophagus. And there's something um, structural and she suggested um, drinking a glass of water and hopping at the same time, which I thought was really interesting. And hopping, okay. And so it's, a, it's like another thought, but whatever, if anyone's interested. Um, this is just such a, 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 like I said, it's really broad topic and there's so many different entry points to it. So I appreciate your all, all, your, all of your feedback. Great, thanks for being on the call. Thanks for bringing up interesting topics. All right, we have an, a question from Anissa. Hi. Hi, one of our favorite people. What is your question? Um, so I have finally decided to do an in-depth mentorship with intuitive development. And uh, so I'll be the uh, being, being mentored. And I really built up a lot of stress surrounding developing my intuition and whatnot. So I'm wondering if there's any advice or messages that I could receive to help me with kind of de-stressing as I begin this three-month in-depth intuitive development mentorship uh, relationship. If there's any hints, tips, or guidance from spirit guides or anything like that. Um, I, I'm open to what you have. Thank you. Great. And Anissa, we'll work this out so you get the recording like within the next like few hours so you can listen. In particular, Daniel asked a question that like we all listed tons of things. So we'll revisit that. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I caught the tail end of that when I was on the road listening. Right. Okay. Yeah, so we'll come back and do that. All right. So people, oh, everyone, let's see what other things we have to share just for Anissa right now. And yeah, Anissa, there's tons and tons of stuff there. Okay. All right, Jeannie's ready. I'm going to be really simple. Breathe. Just breathe. Breathe in and out. Don't forget the out part or the in part. Do both parts of those things and just breathe. And spiritually, what I'm getting for you is please stop making a mountain out of a molehill. They don't give you anything that you're, well, that's not true, but they, they tend, if you listen and do what you're, what they tell you to do, they don't tend to give you more than what you're ready for. And you will not give yourself more than you, what you're ready for. I'm going to tell you a really quick story. So uh, I took me forever and a day to admit out loud that I was a medium. I was probably a medium the whole time I was telling you I was just a tarot card reader. So um, <laughs> they, you, they won't give you more than what you're ready for and um, don't make a mountain out of a molehill and you, you can do this. And um, like I said, I was probably a medium the whole time, but I would admit it to myself. So, you know, you, it, it, it will come and it'll be okay. And for God's sakes, breathe. <laughs> okay thank you welcome thanks Jeannie. Bonnie's next hi Anissa thank Hello. you for your question we have all been where you're at so we totally get it it's it's a tough journey but it's a worthy journey just so you know um okay for you what I'm getting is remember you need to take baby steps I sense that you're a very driven, motivated, passionate person. Would you agree with that? 
when I have self-confidence in myself, yes, I would agree okay. with that. So you want everything now. So the guidance for you is, have you heard the phrase, don't ever try to eat an elephant in one bite? <laughs> you no. know, it's kind of a weird, a weird saying, but the point being, we want something so bad. And of course we feel like we've earned it. We deserve it as you do, right? But we can't have it all right now. Our culture has painted a picture. Oh, well, I can look it up on Google and I can do this. So our culture is kind of like, okay, I can get it right now. But when it comes to real soul work, which is what you're about to dive into, you have to do the work. The work is the growth. The work is the empty channel for you to receive through. It's the way that you trust. It's the way that you lose any perfectionist tendencies you may have and extra pressure that you put on yourself to get it all now, like society expects, right? Like Google expects. So remind yourself, every step you take forward, you are going in the direction where you want to be. So again, piggybacking on the breathing breathe, make sure your self-care is extra good right now, because you're going to need that on the days where you try to put extra pressure on yourself and you start beating yourself up. It'll help temper that for you so that you don't hold that. You remind yourself, hey, every baby step I make, I'm doing good. If I go backward a little bit, that's okay. I'm learning. I'm growing. This is the process. So I hope that helps you. Thank you, Bonnie. Absolutely. Peace, love, and light to you. Thanks, Bonnie. Susie's next. Hey, Nissa. I'm so glad to see you. Hi, um, I could like be that broken record and say breathe because as soon as, as soon as Jeannie said it, I was just like on the floor. But um, I would like to assure you that there is no wrong way to find your light. Mm -hmm. Okay. I could get soppy and say, oh, but your light shines all the time. This is for you looking within yourself. I also want to reinforce Bonnie's baby steps. Okay. And that, and, and I think it, she's seen a whole lot of this stuff I made notes about. So I just want to reinforce that, but look at if, if, if you're finding that you're not trusting what you get, what information you get, you can oh. use your body or use a pendulum or use some external focal point that you can point to and say, oh, look, this is what this says. This is reinforcing what I'm getting. But I think more than anything, give yourself permission to do it and you're not going to screw it up because the universe encompasses everything. Thank yeah, you. Susan. That's what I got. I'm, I'm, I'm eager to hear your progress too. So. <laughs> Thanks, Susie, Kelsey, and then Susan. Okay, so um, again, I am the physical fairy. So this is how I think of intuition and supporting yourself, like your body, um, because you're going to be up leveling probably in your energy. So like really nourishing your physical body as much as you can, like doing a lot of grounding, extra grounding um, to kind of balance, you know, you're in that spiritual realm. So balance that out. Um, eating fruit can be really, really especially for like enhancing your intuition um so if you're wanting to like really take it to that awesome level just eat fruit maybe not like all day every day but just kind of up the amount that you're eating currently um you never want to just all of a sudden eat tons and tons of fruit because you'll detox heavy so just like a little bit at a time, but it can nourish and help you through it. Like apricots specifically are helpful for um, um, strengthening your intuition. And then I also intuitively got melons for you and pears came up too. So you might try um, using those and then getting lots of rest. Remember to get rest and honor that for yourself. Okay, thank you so much, Kelsey. All right, Susan's next. Thanks, thanks, Kelsey. Congratulations, and you got this, first of all. I'm so, so excited for you. Um, I would say focus on the now. Um, you mentioned it's a three-month program, but you just have to do what's right in front of you. So um, try not to get caught up in the three months, 
but yeah. just now. What's right now? What's what's the task right now? So just trying to be in, in the present moment and be with what's now. And as far as um, I would say walking, you know, being out in nature, you know, taking those breaks, even if it's just five minutes or a two minute breath break, you know, just those, it doesn't have to be a big, long one hour practice or a half an hour practice. Um, just like those baby steps, those little, those little snacks, those little uh, self-care snacks can be really nourishing, especially when you're, you're doing this kind of work. Um, so make some time for just those little baby snacks, whether that's a, you know, a couple, you know, four or five deep breaths or, um, five minutes, you know, take a cup of tea and just be outside and, and notice what you see and notice what you smell, notice what you feel, you know, kind of checking in on, on the different, on the different levels, um, sticking with just, just right now. And then, um, what also is a no, yoga nidra. If you've ever done a yoga nidra meditation, also it's called eye rest or an SDR, non-sleep deep rest. Um, that's really, a, a, you can have, they can be as long as 10 minutes or as long as an hour. There's some great, great ones on Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, um, but that's a good way to, um, to let your body really kind of check out. It kind of takes you into that spa space between being awake and being asleep. And um, so that could be a, a something that could be helpful for you too. But congratulations, and I I look forward to to what's ahead for you. Thank you, Susan. Great. Okay, let's see some things for me. Start my timer on me. Um, so in terms of breath, you may already know a whole bunch of things. Um, aim to make your out breath longer than your in breath. Aim to have your whole in and out breath be at least six seconds or longer. Don't push anything too far, though. Don't aim to be perfect. Don't aim to be too much or to get it too small. Like, I just know your tendency might be to go to extremes. So this is true of everything, including breathing. And then there's a healing breath that after I say some things, we might all do together. The healing breath might be a good practice. It uh, ends up being a version of a meditation, too. Um, for you, I'd focus more on being of service to others and how you're you're growing yourself in this way to be of service to others more, not focus on what you're doing about you to change you, grow you, like anything. It just focusing on you, I think, can get you more nervous. So focusing on how you're just opening to be more of service. In whatever way you're you're practicing when you're with your you're at your mentor, when you're doing practice sessions or anything find a way that you can have low stakes, mm -hmm. work with people you feel comfortable with or people you don't know at all, if that's more comfortable. Find a place to sit and do your work that feels more comfortable. You might want white noise outside your room if you want more privacy or whatever it is so that you feel like more comfortable, safe and the stakes are low. Create a context where you feel safe to like fail or be wrong. Right? We have to take risks in order to grow. So you're having to poke around in all these places to find out where your intuition is and where you're tapping in and where you're right, where you're not, like what's you and what's not like their energy and the messages for them. So it's playing around and not having it always perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Is how you'll find out where where it's good, where you're good, where the messages are good. Um, find whatever phrases. So this is you can be working with a practitioner, you might be able to find some of these phrases on your own that help you get more centered in you. So thinking of what I know of you, it might be things like, I'm good, I'm good, or I'm good enough. I'm just enough. I'm just the right amount. Like whatever it is, you'll feel it in your body to know, right? So I didn't have you talking, right? So you play and, and like can intuit and feel what the messages might be. So find what those things are. Those are ways you can present yourself. Um, be aware of how you might, um, the ulp is the upper limit problem of like taking yourself above what you know how to be with and integrate. So on the one hand, know what thing, what are your patterns of how you might ulp and, and cause yourself problems. So I think of you of like physically attempting to do too much. So watching that you don't do that, knowing that you're stepping into a, a period of life where you're you're stepping into new things. And then as you're discovering that you're able to do things, right? So you're your amount of success and joy and capacity and knowing of yourself, all this going higher. So you want to think about how you integrate. So I don't know what the ways are you integrate in a way that's healthy. So for some people, it is eating healthy food. Sometimes it can be sleeping in particular ways or times it can be a bath. 
some for some people it's exercise for you it's probably not exercise you know so seeing what you know standing on the ground and feeling your feet on the grass knowing what how you integrate so doing enough things that are integrating watching not be a hawk on yourself because that'll drain you too but just watching what are the ways that you might cause problems but you know to bring yourself down yeah so those are some of the things and we're almost at well I, I've used all my time but I'll just tell everyone I guess the healing breath and so um it, and I say, well, you're elongating your breath too. When you breathe in, roll over directly to the roll out. Don't pause at the top. The place to pause in the healing breath is after the out breath. So it's a deep breath in and then breathing out and out and out. Breathe out so you are aware that you don't like you're not a, you don't have any other breath you have in you. So you go all the way out. And then it's not exactly a pause. It's a, a waiting until you feel the natural impulse to breathe back in. And not waiting so long that you gasp when you breathe back in, but it's out, out, and then waiting until you feel the in. And what supposedly it's doing is that it changes the pH in your blood. So it's it's helping you get more present in a whole bunch of ways with the, the biochemical change in you. So I just, I don't know all enough of what they are, but it supposedly does a whole bunch of shifts and changes in the body. And when I do this, my mind goes totally blank. So it's a meditation in itself too. And it's teaching you to elongate your out breath also. So there you go. And this is from Gay Hendricks. And I think it pulls from all kinds of different like yoga practices and all kinds of things. Thank Who else? You. Anyone else have anything else for Anissa? Anissa, I think it's great you're doing this. I'm thinking about before you started working with MeWe, way back where you're kind of on the road to maybe doing something with your intuition and your, I just think about what your energy is like now compared to the way you were way back then. And um, yeah, so I feel grateful that you're stepping back in and I'm so aware of how much you've grown. Kelsey, you've got more. Yeah, I just wanted to share. I think the energy I feel around you doing this is like I'm noticing intuitively, like it sounds very like exciting. And I feel very like it feels like there's a lot of light energy and like positive energy coming from it. Um, and it feels like, I, yeah, like I just want to celebrate that you're like choosing to follow your heart here and really like it seems like you're tapping into like the truth of your soul, which is really beautiful so just want to share that oh gosh truth of your soul isn't that just mind-blowing I love that phrase that got me goosebumps yeah it seems like you are Bonnie's got more hi Anissa I want to congratulate you again and I know that you feel like you have issues with confidence so sometimes that can instill fear in us oh my gosh am I going to fail am I going to this someone touched on it you're not going to fail you're going to be okay right but we're going to have hiccups on any of our rides so just keep believing in yourself when you have those days where you feel like the self-belief or the self-confidence is lower than maybe you want it to be ask ask for help from the other side because those on the other side that are here supporting us are waiting for us to ask so don't be afraid to ask because when you do they go flood in like crazy wanting to help you in every way shape or form that they can and that relationship will build the more that you ask and the more that you trust and mm -hmm. it will help you realize what a strong powerful being you are with all this army on the other side pushing you along so be sure to ask because that's something we have to do to get help okay you're going to be great awesome. <laughs> thank you again certainly and Nessa, before uh, Bonnie spoke about those on the other side, I started thinking about your dad. So just think about how your dad is supporting you on your journey. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. One last thing I was just going to, I sensed like you have beings on your side already to the point that you're at in your life. It's like, just kind of feels like there's definitely people on your side helping you in that realm. Thank you. Thanks so much, Anissa, for jumping in and asking a question. Anissa helps run all these events from behind the scenes, and she helps run the fair out in front. So thanks so much, Anissa, for all the good that you do in the world and supporting all this process of all of us coming together for years.
So let's see, we are finishing up. I know we had a couple of people just join us. We are finishing up our MeWe panel on de-stressing, cleanse your mind and soul. There's some information in the chat on giving us feedback about today. Yeah, shout out to Anissa and woohoo. Uh, giving us feedback today and we will put you in a drawing for a free 30 minute session with one of us of your choice. I'm gonna put the practitioner's information in the chat again. And practitioners, we are all going to check out so that all of your contact info is in the recording for other people to reach out to. Let's go in a related order as we did before. We'll have Susan go first. And then Susie, and Jeannie, and Kelsey, and Bonnie. And I'll mention Satora's information again. All right, Susan, then Susie. I'm Susan Watkins with Inspired Life Essential Wellness. And I help people address what might be getting in their way with regard to moving forward in a life that feels joyful and as stress-free as possible, knowing that stress is always a part of, of being a part of this world. So um, I'm a Reiki master, so I utilize Reiki, movement, breath practice, sound healing, lots of different modalities. Uh, you can find me on social media at inspiredlife.essentialwellness, as well as uh, heal.me slash inspiredlife. And you can also email me at inspiredlife.service at gmail.com. And I'm running a 30% special, 30% off special for those that uh, have watched the panel today. So thanks so much for being here and allowing us to be part of your healing journey. Thanks, Susan. Susie. I'm Susie Parker Goins of Blue Lightning Healing, and I'm a channel who brings through source that presents itself in honestly whatever way makes you comfortable so that you can relax and ease into your your spiritual journey so i'll use cards i'll talk to ancestors shoot i'll even talk i'll even argue with your grandma to be honest and i'll talk to spirit guides you know and 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 continue to do whatever we need to do together so you can shift your energy to be more open to this wonderful love-filled life i'm at bluelightninghealing.com and you can contact me at susie s-u-s-y at bluelightninghealing.com. I'm so looking forward to seeing you all later. Thanks again. Bye. Thanks, Susie. Jeannie. Hello, I'm Jeannie Sullivan, and my business is Heartfelt Energies. I specialize in offering psychic intuitive readings as well as energy sessions that are based in something called Primus Activation Healing Technique. Primus for short. It's kind of like having a massage for your soul. It really balances, grounds, and centers you. And I'm offering a special today for those of you on the panel. You get 20% off an hour session. So you get a $120 session for $100. So that is my gift to you. You can reach me at, through Facebook at Heartfelt Energies, as well as online at heartfeltenergies.com. And, um, and I... Thank you very much for participating with us tonight. Have a great night. Thanks so much, Jeannie. And next is, I think, Kelsey. Kelsey Hart here. I'm a medical, intuitive, and plant-based healer, and I guide people to heal their mind, body, soul, spirit, and heart, utilizing plant-based nutrition, herbs, energy healing, and medical medium information. And I've gone through my own transformation of healing, chronic health symptoms, um, detoxing my body and just really creating a life that is in alignment for myself, my heart and my soul um, and tapping into nature and energy. And so I, I help, I uh, facilitate that with others. And if you're interested in chatting more about it, you can reach out to me. Um, my email address is Holistic Heart, H A R T E, healing at gmail.com. And then I also have a website. You can check out more information there, um, holistichearthealing.com. Thank you. Thanks, Kelsey. Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie Rigsby here. Hi again, y'all. Uh, owner of Let Your Soul Breathe, all about stress management. There's a big umbrella of stress management, I call it. And since there's 7.9 billion of us roughly on the planet, all with unique gifts and talents, we all need to be approached differently. 
So I approach myself as a lifetime student, constantly learning and not because I'm a bad student, I'm a good student, but I want to uh -huh. keep learning. I want to learn from each other. I want to never be the expert on everything because we're all here to be connected and to help each other on our path. So I am ever flowing in a sense of learning something new. Uh, I have I'm a Reiki master. I do sound and crystal healing, specifically love crystals, I'm all about it. Um, life and soul coaching, intuitive guidance. I do divination cards, you name it. I teach classes and I'm very big on that because I feel like we all need to be empowered to feel good in our own skin and realize the healing potential we have within. Sometimes it just needs to be activated. Sometimes someone needs to help you find the layers of you that you have buried, put them up in front like a mirror so that you can begin to do the work to heal. So I help teach people how to love themselves again. I can be reached, uh, or for the first time for some, I can be reached at letyoursoulbreathe.com. I am running a special today, 26% off for one-on-one -on -one 90 minute session. I like to do 90 minutes because it gives you a little bit more bang for your buck and it allows a lot to happen within your first session. So certainly reach out to me if you feel like you need some help and know that I am a safe space. I am not gonna judge you and I'm here for your specific needs. So we customize it based on your needs. I wish you peace, love, and light on your healing journey. And I thank you all for taking the first step in listening and leaving no stone unturned in your healing. Thanks, Bonnie. I'm Lorelai Shamayo. I'm an intuitive eye reader, matchmaker, and body psychology coach. I read your mind. Well, I read your mind. I read your eyes. I might read your mind too. Read your eyes and read your soul and answer questions about your purpose, your path, relationships, career path, um, I use this work for matchmaking to help you find partners for romance, for business, et cetera. And I read your body and help you be more aware of your experience, um, to be more aware consciously of that, to be more consciously aware of, of your soul and your purpose and help you make choices and actions that you take and don't take, uh, ways that you support yourself and people that you play with so that you can maximally be on your path and express the, the gift, the spirit that is coming through you. I'm Got more information at laureleishamayo.com. That's L-A-U-R-E-L-I-S-H-I-M-A-Y-O.com. I'm doing a lot of, with my matchmaking work right now. I'm having some drop-in events that are first time by donation, second time $20. After that, there's a package you can do of as many as you want in three months for a certain price. I've got Tuesday, September 6th at 6 p.m. I'm going to have one of those again. Uh, another one is on Monday, September 12, 5 to 6 p.m. Pacific time. I've also got authentic relating games coming up this Wednesday, date night, bring one, find one. I'm scheduling some speed dating events for the Seattle area. Some other people in Oregon are wanting them too. And I'm also going to be doing a be here now in a circle event. So being present in the moment um, on Thursday. Yeah. So is this all right? This is in Eugene because the MeWe Fair is going to be in Eugene this weekend. September 10 and 11. After that, we're going to be in Portland, September 17 and 18. I'm going to be doing Be Here Now in a Circle in Portland as well. And we're going to be in Linwood, October 15 and 16. If you are thinking of getting a booth, you can do it with us in person at one of these venues. And we also run metaphysics and wellness fairs online. The next one is October 22. We look forward to having you play with us on, in fairs, on panels. We also have a practice circle coming up. This Monday at 4 p.m. on Labor Day, practice opening to your gifts. And uh, we have a learning circle coming up on Wednesday, September 21. We have tons going on here at mewefairs.com. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, everyone, for being here together, holding space and the energy, asking questions, and doing this all together. Thank you, panelists.